Batman's got a date with Access Chemicals. Here's your look at the Jada Toys Batman the 1989 movie, Batmobile and Batman. From the 1989 movie Batman, this 124th scale Batmobile is made of a die cast body with rubber tires. Also included is a 2 and 3 quarter inch Batman figure. Now, before we all decide to autopilot our cars and drive them in the factories and blow them up, Batman doesn't kill. Yes, he does. We're going to first figure out how long the Batmobile is. And then I'll also bring in a couple of other 124th Batmobiles for comparisons. Grabbing the tape measure, though, from the end fin to the front of its what, nose, we'll go with that. The Batmobile in length is about eight and a half inches. And then to flip that around, you're looking at the car being about 21 and a half centimeters long. I have a couple of 124th Batmobiles we can bring in for comparisons. I thought the first one and the best one to use for a comparison, here's what it looks like with the 66 Batmobile. First of all, I'm going to put it from front so you guys can see. Hopefully you guys can see. They're about the same length. Now with the characters being sitting inside of the 124th size also... It'd be standing to reason that there should be of the same size or of the same scale. Although to look at it, I still swear that the 89 Batmobile would just be a little bit bigger than the one that Adam West's Batman does drive around. Moving this one out, one out of the way, we can also bring in one of my favorite all-time Batmobiles. Here's the one that Ben Affleck drives. And again, when you're looking at it, scale-wise does get thrown out the window, I feel, in this case. The 89 Batmobile, I feel, should be a lot longer. Maybe not as wide, necessarily, as Affleck's, but I do feel like it should be a lot longer than Ben Affleck's Batmobile. And then last, as a comparison, we can bring in the one that drives is driven around by Robert Pattinson. Some actually like the design of this Batmobile. It's kind of more of a muscle car than anything else. And again, when you're looking at them, maybe in this case, once again, like the 89 Batmobile, I feel should be a little bit bigger, a little bit longer, perhaps. But if you are collecting 124th, which seems to be my space now when it comes to collecting these die-cast cars from Jada Toys, I'm finally happy to have an 89 Batmobile that can go along with the rest of the others. While Keaton's car is way back there, let's go ahead and actually have a look at the Batman that comes included with it. Now, once again, you're going to be getting a Staction die-cast metal figure, though granted, it does have actually a plastic cape. These Batman don't serve any other purpose. They're not ones that can be actually be able to sit inside their car. And I don't even think in a case like this with Batman, he'd be able to sit in his car. Let's just even say for the sake of this, this does slide open, by the way. If you look at the size of Batman, and then you look at the size of the seats, I think Batman is way too proportionally bigger than the car that he's actually supposed to be driving. I just gave away by the fact that this actually does slide open. But then to take Batman and get a closer look at the details... You know, it's not a bad-looking Batman. I mean, obviously, if one is looking for likeness for Michael Keaton, you're not going to necessarily find it, but it checks most of the boxes of what you would normally expect a Batman to be. The figure, for all intents and purposes, comes included with a, splant, a display stand. A splant. A display stand, in which the figure can technically ta attach onto the top of it. This actually is inside the box, as you saw in the opener of this review. But Jada Toys always continues to put these little... Well, the, the idea is that this is the bottom half. This is supposed to be on the underside of the cardboard. This is the top half. This goes on top of the cardboard. And then there's a screw that screws the two plates together. I do wish that they could still make these flat, though, because you have these extra little ridges of plastic, these little lips that stick up. It's impossible, then, to take a Batman figure, any figure that comes included with these Jada Toys releases, and actually use these as functioning stands. In many of the cases, what I usually end up doing is I sand the bottom of these off, and I just get rid of that excess plastic, so I can actually use these as stands. I just wish that Jada Toys would do this for me, so I wouldn't have to do this every single time I get myself a display stand. But I do actually like to have the figures with stands. Technically, Batman does, though, stand okay, despite for the fact that the figure has really, has really small feet. And again, he has the plastic cape, but most of the figure, all of the figure, in fact, is die-cast metal. Put the Batman figure here, and let's go ahead and pick up the Batmobile that goes along with him. This is a nice-looking Batmobile, and for the longest time, this is my go-to Batmobile, until Ben Affleck's Batmobile got introduced to moviegoers. Now that's my go-to for a Batmobile. But it does look very much like the Batmobile that we get from the 89 movie and the follow-up Batman Returns, of course, before it has to become a torpedo pod. It does look really good, though. 
it does have for an entryway for Batman, the canopy there that slides up. This actually has a little gro a groove, a little track right there in which the plastic canopy actually slides then forward. And inside, I don't know if you guys can actually see it or not, are actually a full control console, a tiny little steering wheel, a little speed, a uh, little uh, a stick there in the middle there, <laughs> a speed stick. And then on the uh, either side, of course, driver's side, passenger side, everything though is left just barren to the black plastic. Uh, there looks to be, if I can actually see it here, an odometer. It looks like that's actually been printed inside that, but everything else has been left basically just a black plastic, which is fine. I don't think they have to necessarily put a lot of details. In the movie, normally would have had like little red buttons and stuff like that inside. Again, I think it's nicely detailed for what little we can actually see of it. This then again slides forward and back. I guess if you did want to have Batman standing outside, obviously you can't put him inside the car. If you want to have him standing outside of it, then probably would make the most sense to have the canopy slid forward. There is other one place too that the Batmobile does open up. And it's not in a place where you'd imagine. If you look to the back of the car, just though above the turbine engine, if you lift the flap above the thruster, you can actually see that you can lift this up. Now this seems to be plastic, the actual rocket on the back here. This is metal, so of course you can lift that up. I wasn't expecting this to lift up at all, if anything. I knew that the gun turrets on the sides would flip around. I knew that the canopy would slide forward. I really wasn't expecting the back section of the Batmobile to actually lift up. It doesn't really serve any other purpose than, I suppose, Bruce or Alfred, for that matter, going to the back and checking to see if the rocket thruster is working okay. Pull that up. While we're also on the back of the Batmobile, you can see the taillights pin painted nicely there in the red, which does nicely to break up all the black that they use here for it. There's a little bit of lighter gray used for the back thruster, so again, you get a little bit of that also happening also as well. As we spin this around, you can see the nice rubber tires. I love the fact that they are using rubber tires. And there's the little Bat logo on the inside of it. I was wondered why in Batman and Robin, Batman's Batmobile actually had tire treads that actually had bat prints that would leave behind a trail of bats. Is that a really a smart idea? Anybody would be able to follow Bruce back to the Bat Cave and know exactly where he lives. This one actually is just a regular tank tread, a regular tire tread. But I do like the idea that they actually put the little bat emblems on the inside of it. You've got a larger tire here in the front, or on the back. You've got a smaller tire here in the front, again, made of softer or soft rubber plastic. Then when you flip this around or spin this around to the front, we've got the headlights there on the front, brightly colored here in yellow. And again, you've got the turbine engine there also in the front. And then the last thing that the figure, all oh, the last thing the figure, the last thing that the vehicle does have is also it has the gun turrets. Now, for the gun turrets, you want to make sure that the canopy is drawn back because if you bring it forward, it actually covers over the flaps where those Gatling guns, those turbine, those turret guns will actually pop out. So you want to just make sure that the canopy is slid back as far back as you can get it. And then these, you actually just take your finger and flip them around. They don't necessarily lock in place. This one actually, you'll see, just continues on its merry little way. It's just on a peg that works here. There's a peg in the front. Oh, move that back. There's a peg here on the front. There's a peg on the back. And then between the two, it sort of just rotisseries itself around that. And then again, you've got the little gun turret there on the front, painted nicely in silver. A little bit more of gray, I guess, than, than a silver. This other side, though, on the other hand, or on the other turret, doesn't seem to lock in place or doesn't allow me to actually flip this all the way around. By the nature of the thinner plastic that it will likely have used for the peg here on the front and on the back, I don't really want to force it, but it does seem like this one doesn't seem to be as willing to flip around as this turret is here. I don't know really what's wrong with it and why I can't flip it all the way around, but the last thing I really want to do is want to break that because it would be impossible for me to get in there unless I had to dismantle the Batmobile and see if I can actually get in there and fix it. So I'm just going to leave it as is. Again, these don't necessarily lock in place, but at least if you did want to have it displayed, reminding again yourself that Batman doesn't kill anybody. Yeah, right, he does. Uh, you can flip these over and just permanently have the Batmobile displayed with the turrets out. The only other thing that the Batmobile doesn't have a uh, play to, of course, when it visits access chemicals, is it doesn't have the little grenade that pops out the front of the tire and doesn't drop off. Uh, I guess they could have probably put that in there as well. It would have probably involved having to remove this and replace it with that ball, that ball grenade that it comes out of it. So it doesn't have that but it does have at least everything else that you would recognize from the Batmobile from the 89 movie. 
all in all, it's a nice looking vehicle for me, at least for the displaying of this. I don't know if I would be sliding the canopy forward. I'd much rather have it displayed back. And again, I don't know if I would necessarily display with the gun turrets, but I do like the idea that Jada Toys took the time and put all the details in there that you would recognize right away from the movie. Still, though, when you look at Batman, though, and then you look at the ride that goes along with him, I feel like Batman is way too big, or perhaps the Batmobile is slightly smaller, especially when we did compare it with the other Batmobiles that we got from Jada Toys. This one does seem like it's just a hair smaller than it would actually would be in real life, but I'm finally happy to get myself a 124th scale Batmobile that I can have on collection, on display, with the rest of my Jada Toys 124th Batmobile collection. Actually, come to think of it, the Batmobile doesn't actually drop off its, quote, cargo until long after it shielded itself up inside of Access Chemicals. Joker's goons, of course, pummeling it with bullets. The Batmobile then drops its grenade and proceeds to blow up the factory with everybody inside of it. Batman never kills. One thing I would like to see as a follow-up to this Batmobile, because I don't think there's anything I really would have changed to this design, is that I do hope that Jada Toys does release one that has the Bat Shield. I don't know how that would necessarily work if it would actually be still a practical Batmobile underneath it, and it would literally just be a shell of plastic you put over top of it. Because I don't think the likelihood is there that they would do a full die-cast shelled Batmobile. But you never know. As they've already done this one, that would certainly be something as an extension I would love to see them do for a future release. And to do also one better, I would also like to see them at some point do and release a Batman Returns Batpod Batmobile, which of course has the sides removed so Batman can slip in those tight quarters and uh, evade the cops that are pursuing him. All these are more wishful thinking thoughts on my part, but it's certainly something I would love to see Jada Toys do. Jada Toys is nailing it when it comes to these 124th scale uh, Batmobiles or even vehicles in general. Normally in the past, I would have been collecting the 118th size, but with how many of these vehicles I'm picking up from Jada Toys, I'm actually more content now to be picking up 124th. Not only do you get just as much detail as you get for the 1 118th variety, but you're also getting them with a smaller scale and they're taking up a lot less space on the shelf, which then means your budget can then be put towards getting more of these because you can say to yourself, your thought process is, well, I am saving space, so I should technically buy more of these. Uh, the thought process of a collector. But if you guys are interested and would like to get this one for yourself, I actually did find this one over at Entertainment Earth's website. Uh, with the new Flash movie also coming around, and of course Michael Keaton coming back to reprise his role, he was supposed to be in Batgirl, but well, <laughs> we just scratched that movie, scrapped that movie altogether. Now we get Michael Keaton appearing in the Flash movie for right now at least, and it's a good time to be a Michael Keaton fan because Batman's coming back, at least the original 80s Batman. I don't know whether he's actually going to be driving around this Batmobile or if he's going to have a variation to this Batmobile. Time will certainly tell when Flash gets released. But again, if you guys are interested to get this one for yourself, I'll provide the link down below to Entertainment Earth's website. And also, if you enjoyed this video, want to hit with a like. If you love in the content you guys are seeing and certainly on board to see more, then make sure you have, if you haven't already, that you hit the subscribe button down below that you're also turning on the bell notification. Lots of stuff coming your way, guys, so make sure you're keeping your peepers peeled to this channel. And thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.